We now return to your regular programming. All right, this one is for Lotus Flower 2009. Let's see what it says. The title is Nope, and it reads, I am a fan of Mr. Nelson's work. I really am, and I really wanted to love this album. I did. But it is worse than Chaos and Disorder, which at least had dinner with Dolores on it. It's worse than Crystal Ball, another bloated three-disc set. He is a genius. He always will be a genius. But more than ever before, Prince plays for himself. No one else can hear his music. And that's an interesting thing. That review tells me what kind of fan that person is. That person is a fan, not a friend. That person is into Purple Rain. He even kind of quotes Billy, you, no one digs your music but yourself. And to him, I want to say, F off. <laughs> now, I wasn't a huge, huge fan of Crystal Ball either. I, I can take or leave some of the tracks, but Chaos and Disorder was really amazing, so I don't know where this person's coming from. It's weird. All right, so the next one's probably gonna be Fighting Words. This one is for Musicology, and it reads, Really? Whatever happened to Prince? Ever since Love Sexy, he has gone from bad to worse. Whoever rated Graffiti Bridge, Diamonds and Pearls, or this Musicology a five-star album most definitely didn't like Prince for the same reasons I did. Firstly, I think he's lost all faith in himself. He was so brilliant when he used to write funny, tender, and thought-provoking lyrics. Did not everyone marvel at this line? It's been seven hours and 15 days since you took your love away. If I could say one thing to Prince, it would be, you were the one who taught us all to believe in ourselves, which is what you you're not being now. We loved you because you said what you thought and a lot of people really got you. We loved you because it sounded like your albums were produced on your keyboard in your bedroom and there is nothing more tender or true than that. And you know what? I have to agree. Musicology was divergent from a lot of the stuff that he had done up to that point. So obviously, if you liked everything before Love Sexy, and you don't like anything after Love Sexy, whew, musicology is not up your alley. So I completely get that. The note that he doesn't believe in himself rings 100% false in terms of talking about musicology. Because musicology, he was making a statement. He was also super funny and tender and all of those things that he says that Prince is not anymore. It's just so weird that some people look at the same piece of art and they see the opposite of what I would see or what you would see and obviously the opposite of what was intended. Musicology is like probably one of Prince's best albums ever. So it's just odd that it would like ever get a one-star review. All right, this one is for Planet Earth. The title is, I guess Musicology was the last one. I'm a diehard Prince fan and and as such, I must say that Planet Earth sucks. I was hoping that 3121 was a one-time disappointment, but I was wrong. I wish I could get my money back. Sad to say, but I think the prince who gave us classics like Let's Go Crazy, Adore, Purple Rain, Kiss, etc., 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 the list goes on and on, is dead. So the fact that it's 2007 and the only songs that you can list as hits are from the 80s. I th again, I think that that spells out what kind of Prince listener this person is. Especially the fact if you're going to say 3121 sucked, oh my god, that album's amazing. I, th I also find it pretty funny when people like to preface their comments by, you know, I'm a huge Prince fan and I've been listening to him forever and blah blah blah, but I didn't like this one. As if that changes anything. I mean, you like what you like, it's fine. Your level of support for him as an artist and your understanding of his musical journey is what's going to stipulate how big a fan you are, I guess. Not just because you happen to buy an album in the 80s. All right, so this is for Plectrum Electrum 2014. The title is Don't Buy It Right Away. Meh, I was pretty excited about this album because from the YouTube videos, this group seemed to have so much intensity and chops that it couldn't miss. But the first listen just didn't do it for me. Maybe I'll feel differently about it later, but Hannah Ford and the other ladies seem infinitely more interested in their own versus going through the Prince treatment, which we've all seen before. He tried to do it with the bangles, the time, Apollonia, Sheila E, putting his wardrobe on them, writing material for them and performing with them, and how many of them really lasted. The Bengals sort of did, but they seemed to steer away from him after jamming with him and accepting that one song, Manic Monday. Prince, please get funky and rock out on your own like you did in the early days. Hannah, Donna, Ida, you're so good and gifted. With all due respect, you don't need this guy. And that's hilarious because it's like 
it's a one star review, but it's a backwards compliment to Third Eye Girl. Now the question is, are they right? Mm, I'd probably say no. I don't feel like Prince dressed them or made them look a certain way. As a matter of fact, they all looked pretty different from each other, and none of them really matched Prince. But again, I hearken back to the references that people make. He tried it with The Time and Sheila E and Apollonia and The Bangles. Really? Those are your references? They're Purple Rain references? And the Bengals? Who stood the test of time? Sheila E has stood the test of time. The Time have stood the test of time. Apollonia not so much, but she didn't really want to do music all that much. And they are pretty amazing, which was why it was Prince and Third Eye Girl. It wasn't Third Eye Girl, it wasn't Prince. It was Prince and Third Eye Girl. And if you listen to that album, you can actually tell that all of the members of the band had input on that album, which I thought was really cool. I'll get more into that whenever I get to that review, but I actually really like Plectrum Electrum. Okay, and obviously I had to include one of these. It's a one-star review for Purple Rain. It's titled, An abnormally bad, distasteful, dishonest album. One of the worst things I've ever heard. The first song already is a sheer travesty. Prince conning the listener. Minutes and minutes of absolutely nothing happening. This is simply one of the worst albums, if you can believe it, that I've ever listened. Only the title song is listenable. The rest is utter garbage. There is nothing even close to nothing compares to you or I could never take the place of your man. And don't come saying that this is disco or dance music. Even the dancers would fall asleep or go mad. And I'm pretty sure that this was not supposed to be for Purple Rain. The reference to disco music makes me think it might have been for For You. But this is just an odd one to have on Purple Rain, and you're not even talking about Purple Rain. Some of these people need to get a clue. Now we have the gold experience. This will be fun. Very overrated. This album typifies Prince's output in the 90s, corny and cheesy. The segues in and of themselves are cringe-worthy enough, but the music at this period in Prince's career was that of a lost artist haphazardly chasing trends. He was completely out of touch, and sales of this record reflect that. This is a small minority of Prince fans that like this record, and unless you are a connoisseur of cheesy pop or a completist, I would advise to skip this record and most of Prince's 90s output. Ooh, okay, that one stung. I'm a 90s kid, as we all know, so I love pretty much all of Prince's 90s work because that was when I was into Prince and that's when I was listening hard, hardcore to Prince. But again, he was a haphazard artist that lost his way. No, that was actually when he was finding his way and he was fighting against a system that didn't want to let him have that way. It's pretty interesting how people can interpret that. Obviously, The Gold Experience is one of Prince's best albums ever. It's got so many great songs. It's got shh, it's got gold, it's got pee control, it's got endorphin machine. It's got so many amazing songs on it that I don't understand how anybody could listen to that and not love it. Okay, and the last one is for the Rainbow Children from 2001. In the 80s, Prince was a pioneer among pioneers before him, reinventing pop culture and setting a new standard for every artist during and after our generation. Through the years, amidst lineup, musical, and even name changes, I've been able to conjure up enough spirit to gleefully call and praise him the best pop artist of our century, offering us more than the king or the king of pop could ever muster up. And with that, I mostly agree. But I guess in his own words of the song, sometimes it snows in April, all good things they say never last. This album is a jumble of a confused prince celebrating his newfound religion as a Jehovah's Witness. That means no more darling Nikki lyrics, kitties, which he always tapped into spirituality, but he's gone way overboard. The jazzy Mingus, Lithonius monk stylings of the music will leave you feeling less like you're partying at the Glam Slam and more like you're suffocating in a smoke-filled dive with a room full of beatniks. There are outbreaks of our beloved Purple One crawling out at times, but not enough to keep this fanatic who stuck by and at times even stuck up for him when naysayers say he was over. Give me the black album or even the white album, Love Sexy, any day. Do yourself a favor and listen to this one before buying it. A lack of sales may finally be a wake-up call that we want the real royalty of Prince and Rock to reclaim his crown. And I'm glad that this was actually the one that we ended up ending this video on because 
it also speaks to something that I hear a lot is that I just want to hear the old Prince. I want to hear Love Sexy. I want to hear the Black Album. I just want Purple Rain again. Why can't he go back to Sign of the Times? Prince evolved. And the problem with a lot of people who call themselves fans is that they didn't actually support Prince in his musical endeavors. They wanted him to make 80 sounding music over and over again. They wanted him to never change. They never wanted him to grow or evolve. They just want what they want from him, more of the same. The fact that he would always put out something new and different drove a lot of people away. But for me, it was always the draw. I never knew what I was going to get with a new album. And the Rainbow Children is pretty religious. I will give the reviewer that. So if they had a problem with overly spiritual or religious music, then obviously that's going to be a big deal. Prince was also experimenting with a lot more jazz sounds and stuff in his music around that time. That doesn't make him no longer himself. He's just that version of himself. He's not just gonna keep dumping out the same stuff over and over again. No true artist would ever do that. So honestly, that was pretty interesting kind of going through all those one-star reviews. I mean, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Which one was the worst one-star review in your mind? Let me know that down in the comments. I thought they were all pretty terrible and honestly seem like these people just didn't understand Prince. But let's continue the discussion down in the comments. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Prince's friend. And you can even end up on the wall of gratitude, which is an amazing wall of amazing people who support the channel. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Princess Friend YT, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And as always, may you live to see the dawn. 